let's look at the two major conformations of cyclohexane, which we call chair and boat conformations. So here I have a dot structure of cyclohexane, and I'm showing the hydrogens using the wedge and dash system. So if I said that this was carbon 1 right here, then I could make this carbon 2, this carbon 3, this carbon 4, carbon 5, and carbon 6. And if I look at those six carbons, they look like they're in the same plane, right? I see a hexagon, so it looks like all these carbons might be flat and planar. In reality, that's, that's not the most stable conformation for cyclohexane. It looks more like the molecule down here which we call the chair conformation. So students are sometimes confused as to why it's called the chair conformation. Well, if you tilt it on its side a little bit, you can see you might get something that looks sort of like this. And whenever you go to the pool and you, and you see those, those chairs on, on, on the deck, right, there's a place for your head, right, and then for most of your body, and then for your feet right there. So the, this conformation looks kind of like that. So that's why it's called the chair conformation. So this is the, the chair conformation of cyclohexane. And let's go ahead and number our carbons the same way we did up here. So let's say this is carbon 1, and that would make this carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, carbon 5, and carbon 6. And I think it's easier to see that your carbons are not flat. They're actually uh, up and down relative to each other. And this is easiest to see if you get out your molecular model set and go ahead and make the chair conformation of cyclohexane yourself. Let's look at what is attached to carbon 1. Well, I have a hydrogen that is coming out at me. Right? It's up relative to the plane of the ring. So if I go to carbon 1 down here in my chair conformation, I put in that hydrogen, I have to make it up relative to the plane of the ring. And you can see that if it would be straight up relative to the flat plane of the ring. Right? It would be perpendicular to this flat plane. And we call, we call those substituents axial. Okay, so it's like an axis. So straight up or straight down would be an axial hydrogen. So if I go to carbon 2, I can see that I have a hydrogen straight down. So that's my axial hydrogen. So at carbon 1, it's up. At carbon 2, it's down. At carbon 3, it's an up axial hydrogen. At carbon 4, it's down. At carbon 5, it's up. And at carbon 6, it's down. So you can see it alternates up, down. All right, the other hydrogens would be equatorial. So let's go ahead and write that. So equatorial. I like to think about it along the equator here. So at carbon 1, right, this must be my equatorial hydrogen. You can see that is not straight up or straight down relative to the plane of the ring. It is down relative to the plane of the ring. So that hydrogen is this hydrogen right here on, on my wedge and dash system. And th th these alternate as well. So if I'm down at carbon 1, I'd be up at carbon 2. And then at carbon 3, I'd be down again, carbon 4 up, carbon 5 down, and carbon 6 up. Okay, so now I have all of my hydrogens for my chair conformation of cyclohexane. Let's look at a Newman projection of the chair conformation so, so we can see the stability of the molecule a little bit better. So if I stare down the carbon 2-3 bond, right, so I'm going to stare down the carbon 2-3 bond. And let's go ahead and extend that line this way. And at the same time, I'm going to stare down the carbon 5, 6 bond. Okay, so I'm going to stare down the carbon 5, 6 bond like that. At the same time, I'm staring down the carbon 2, 3 bond. So my eye is going to be over here like that, looking down. So let's first start at carbon 5. So that's the carbon that I see first, so that's going to be a dot on my Newman projection like that. What's attached to that carbon? Well, there's a hydrogen going up, so let me go ahead and put my hydrogen going up like that. And then I have a hydrogen going down and to the left, so that would be down and to the left for my Newman projection. And then carbon 5 is attached to carbon 4, and that bond is going down and to the right, so down and to the right. Again, much easier to see with your model right in front of you. 
If I'm looking down carbon three right here, so that would be carbon three right here, what's attached to carbon three? A hydrogen going straight up, so a hydrogen going straight up, a hydrogen going down and to the right, so a hydrogen going down and to the right on my Newman projection. And then carbon three, of course, is also attached to carbon four, and that bond is going down and to the left, so down and to the left, and then they connect right there like that. I move on to carbon six, right? Carbon six is this carbon right here. I can't see it. Uh, so in a Newman projection, we represent it with this circle, right? Because we know it's right behind the front carbon like that. What is attached to carbon six? Well, there's a hydrogen that's going up and to the left. So up and to the left. There's a hydrogen going straight down, my axial one going straight down, so there there's that one. And carbon six is attached to carbon one. This is going up and to the right. So up and to the right like that. Next, I go to carbon two, right? So that would be, that would be the circle like that. I have a hydrogen going down, right? An axial hydrogen going down. I have a hydrogen going up and to the right, so a hydrogen going up and to the right, and then carbon two is attached to carbon one, that's going up and to the left like this. So that is my Newman projection for the chair conformation of cyclohexane. And we can see why this is a very stable conformation for cyclohexane. Everything is staggered, right? My hydrogens are all staggered, uh, meaning this is very low in energy. So this is the most stable conformation of cyclohexane. Let's look at the boat conformation for cyclohexane. So here is, here is the boat conformation. The chair conformation can turn into the boat conformation, and we will cover how to do that in the next video. So for right now, let's just look at the, the boat conformation, and let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and number it and put in some hydrogens here. So if this is, if this is carbon one, then this would be carbon two, this would be carbon three, carbon four, carbon four, Five, and then carbon six is right here in the back. So let's put in our hydrogens. So won't worry too much about, ax about axial hydrogens or anything like that. Let's just get them in there and let's try to draw the Newman projection for the boat conformation of cyclohexane. So let me go ahead and write, this is the boat conformation, right? Looks kind of like a boat. And if we are going to stare down the carbon two, three bond, right? So again, we're gonna stare down the carbon two, three bond like this. And at the same time, we're gonna stare down the carbon five, six bond again. So we're gonna stare down the carbon five, six bond like that. And we're going to put our eye here. All right, and we're going to draw what we would see. So let's start with carbon five over here. So that would be my dot. So that's my dot. Uh, let's see, what is that carbon attached to? Well, there is a hydrogen going up and to the left. So let's go ahead and draw that hydrogen up and to the left. There is a hydrogen going down attached to carbon five. And carbon five is attached to carbon four. That would be, be going up and to the right. So up and to the right. Let's look at carbon three now. Carbon three also has a hydrogen going up, this one's going out and to the right, so that would be, this would be carbon three, so hydrogen going up and to the right, a hydrogen going straight down, so a hydrogen going straight down, and then this would be going attached to carbon four, right, so it would be going up and to the left over here in my Newman projection. All right, let's look at, let's look at carbon six now, right? So that's the one in back of five. So let's draw carbon six on my Newman projection. Well, this one also has a hydrogen going up and to the left. So this one has a hydrogen going up and to the left. It also has a hydrogen going, going down. So hydrogen going down. And this carbon is attached to carbon one. This would be going up and to the right. So this would be going up and to the right like that. Let's look at carbon two now. Carbon two has a hydrogen going up and to the right, so we go ahead and draw, first draw carbon two, and then a hydrogen going up and to the right, and then a hydrogen going down, so hydrogen going down like that. And then carbon two is attached to carbon one, that's going up and to the left, so up and to the left. And there we have 
our Newman projection for cyclohexane and the boat conformation. Now, we can see that these two, all everything is eclipsed, right? So this Newman projection is eclipsed compared to the staggered um, conformation up here. So we know we 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 know that uh, the eclipsed is going to be higher in energy and therefore less stable, whereas the staggered. Uh, the staggered Newman projection up here means that the chair conformation is more stable. Besides the eclipse, there's also something called flagpole interaction, and that's these hydrogens right here in the boat conformation. They get kind of close together, and so of course that's going to destabilize this conformation as well. You don't get any flagpole interaction with the chair conformation. So for all these reasons, chair conformations are the lowest in energy, making them more stable. In the next video, we'll see how to interconvert chair conformations to boat conformations and vice versa.